स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Welcome back. In lecture fifty-four, we will talk about artificial sewage treatment. Uh, this is part two, where we will talk about secondary treatment. So the different concepts that we will cover are on biological or secondary treatment. Uh, then we'll talk about attached growth systems, then activated sludge process, then stabilization and oxidation ponds, and finally uh, on certain points on artificial methods of sewage treatment. so biological or secondary treatment involves both aerobic and anaerobic microorganisms and there are different types of biological treatment and there are several technologies but principally there are uh, three or four types we can broadly categorize uh, biological treatment to four types but of course within this and with very and there are several varieties or uh, modifications of these processes and that actually uh, has led to several technologies that has been developed over time so the first broad type of biological treatment is could be referred to as attached growth systems and in this particular system the treat, the sewage is treated with of course with bacteria in aerobic condition and using the process of filtration that means in in case of soil if you remember when we applied sewage on soil the pores of the soil acted, acted by uh, you know prevented the solid material to pass through and in the pores the uh, the sewage was acted upon by bacteria so the same principle is more or less utilized to certain extent of course uh, but we will explain that so in this particular case we use a filtration method where a large porous beds with some amount of filter media it could be sand it could be brick bats it could be plastic media so it depends on what sort of me media we use based on that certain other characteristics could be changed so this media facilitates actually aerobic bacteria growth and this that means they form this aerobic bacteria grows over this particular uh, the media and they form a film and when the sewage is passed over this particular media this aerobic bacteria acts upon the sewage and then the sewage gets treated so that is how this particular system works so in activated sludge process the next process uh, here the sewage containing the organic matter is first of all aerated that means we uh, put in compressed air and inside a particular basin or we call it a aeration basin and because we are putting in air microorganisms uh, uh, are you know grows because in the presence of oxygen and the uh, the metabolizing or the reactions actually increase and organic matter uh, is actually uh, uh, is uh, stabilized by the this microbes and the, and some of the uh, and and that actually leads to Uh, uh because we are do it's in a aeration tank sludge sludge uh, sludge forms which is could be sometimes like a flock which is a mix of uh, organic matter as well as bacteria and all this th uh, that is formed this could be also reused again so once that uh, at one end we are actually increasing or reducing the organic content in the sewage in the other end we are creating this flock or a bacterial or a mass where we have this microbes bacteria and then we have the some amount of uh, sewage as well or the su su suspended organic matter as well and this actually could be used by recirculating that putting it back into the influent or the coming in waste water so that the growth of bacteria starts from there itself right so that means we are mix we are creating a population of this uh, bacteria which could be used again and again for treatment of this particular wastewater so uh, uh, sewage containing organic matter is aerated in an aeration basin in which microorganisms metabolize and the organic matter and a portion of the sludge form is recirculated to facilitate further bacterial growth so we uh, uh, sometimes uh, recirculation may not be done we just do aeration but there is no recirculation 
and this is could be referred to in case of aerated lagoons we actually have uh, you know broad tanks where we let the sewage and then we just uh, put in air through it but we don't do any sort of recirculation but broadly activated sludge process refers to systems where some amount of sludge is used or in the other terms activated sludge is used to start the decomposition process the third type is called immobile immobilization carriers uh, immobilization carriers and these are basically advanced uh, systems and primarily this could this could be referred to as advanced growth systems where media is in a fluidized state that means instead of it's a fixed bed instead it's a the media is in a moving state that is a fluidized state so uh, uh, so, uh, because uh, uh, this organic, uh, uh, because the flu the matter is, you know, uh, the this media is all over this particular uh, this sewage because it's moving inside the sewage. There, there is consistency in organic removal, and it also reduces the sludge volume. That means more amount of decomposition takes place. And there could be different types. There could be like uh, one technique is moving bed biofilm reactors (MBBR) or fluidized aerobic bed (FAB). So there are different technologies which are involved, which has variations of designs and so on. But roughly, you, uh, we understand that it's a attached growth system, which is like they, we use filter media, but instead of the filter media being fixed, it moves around in the switch. So. Uh, this reactors or this chambers where this reaction takes place are similar to aeration tanks and the movement is mostly circular and air actually helps in their movement and specific gravity of media allows flotation and movement because most cases we would be using this HDP or plastic media. So, they usually float uh, in this, uh, this wastewater and that is why they move around in the wastewater. Then finally, we have got stabilization ponds and these are artificial open flow through earthen basins where the organic matter is and sewage in sewage is stabilized and uh, be, as you understand these are natural processes where we just put in the sewage in some uh, tanks and it takes certain time for the sewage to be stabilized acted upon by bacteria and so this takes a certain uh, period it may range from a few to a several days and sometimes uh, it depends on uh, what kind of pond it is it may take even months and also based on the climate it may take uh, take much longer periods so let us first start with attached growth system and in this particular uh, uh, systems as we have discussed there is a filtering media and the treatment takes place at the surface of the filtering media where the film is formed and uh, usually colloidal and dissolved organic matter is acted upon and it takes a few minutes uh, in a trickling filter for this matter to get dissolved uh, absorbed by the or uh, this uh, bacterial film itself right so it doesn't takes much time and bacteria converts organic matter into stable inorganic forms and all material is separated or precipitated in biological treatment units or biological flux are formed and these are separated in secondary settling tanks and this we have discussed earlier so, let us talk about the media that is used. Uh, usually, the media in today's context is a synth synthetic media and why this is designed? These are designed media which has got very high specific surface area, uh, then high percentage of void within that media and this uh, are resistant to abrasion and they have good structural strength, uh, insolubility in sewage and resistance to spalling and flaking. So, the media is done in such a way so that it maximizes the surface area where flim, this biological flame is formed and then that means that the more amount of switch comes in contact with that and the uh, this, uh, uh, this conversion or this uh, organic matter stabilization is very, very fast. So, usually it is made of PVC, PE or HDP. Uh, then looking at hydraulic loading rates of this kind of systems, it comes to around 40 to 200 meter cube per day per meter square. And this is the amount of sewage that could be uh, loaded uh, uh, could based on the surface area of that uh, flim. And organic loading rates are uh, this is 0.8 to 6 kg of BOD per day per meter cube. So, this is the amount of BOD that could be removed using this kind of system. And how we calculate this? We have already done that in one of our earlier lectures that how to estimate BOD of the total quantity of sewage and then convert it into grams and see that 
how much of it could be applied as well. We can also based, based on this particular rates, we can determine what is the volume of sewage that could be applied in this particular system. So, sometimes we can also have interlocking sheets of plastic arranged in a honeycomb fashion which also acts as that surface where the plume is formed. And this kind of reactor depths or this chamber depths could be around 12 meter. So, sometimes uh, this, this is synthetic media, but also we can have very simple systems where we can have sand filters or intermittent sand filters. And these are sand beds with open jointed drainage pipes below that is 90 centimeter to 120 centimeter 3 to 4 feet below. And this uh, the effluent actually uh, comes down through the sand and it gets filtered in the sand and the, uh, it's, uh, the organic matter is acted upon in the pores of the sand and then the uh, effluent goes into this under drainage pipes from where it is drained to the next uh, to the disinfection tanks maybe. Um, then flooding of these beds are done at a depth of 3 to 10 centimeter every 24 hours. So, gradually this is the flooding rate of the tanks and then automatically it takes 24 hours for this amount of sewage to go down via this particular sand filter. And similar to sand filter, we can also use this other media such as uh, broken stone and brick ballast and these are known as contact beds and uh, this filtering media is of 2 to 2.5 centimeter size. Actually, this both sand filters and contact beds were used earlier uh, and also in some maybe in some parts of our country we still see them, but nowadays synthetic media is utilized. So, trickling filter is uh, one more uh, system where you can see the design of the trickling filter. So, these are the filter media and this is the effluent pipe which is taken up and then actually this is a rotating arm and then this actually sprays the sewage over the filter media. So, this spreads the sewage over the filter media, the purpose of this spreading like this, that means some amount of aeration also happens because of this. That means some amount of oxygen gets mixed with the sewage and then it goes via the filter media and then it goes below where it is collected and from there it is taken via outlet to the next chamber. So, trickling filters are usually preceded by a primary sedimentation tank and followed by a final settling tank because uh, the, the effluent that comes out has got lot of scum in it uh, or lot of the slime in it and that needs to be separated. So, that is why we use a final settling tank or you can say this is a secondary clarifier. So, uh, as sewage trickles through the filter media, a biological slime forms which absorb the organic material in sewage. So, that is for the initially and then the biological uh, this matter is all already there and when sewage keeps on moving on it, then one time when the layer is very, very thick, then it actually peels off and then comes down along with the sewage and that is why we need to have a secondary clarifier. right? So, that means this uh, scouring takes place when the slime thickens and it, and then new, new slime layer actually takes, uh, takes uh, you know grows over on that particular surface. So, what sort of uh, loading uh, both hydraulic loading and organic loading has to be considered like the previous case we have to consider the rate of wastewater application and rate of BOD application and circulation uh, recirculation ratio some amount of sewage could be recirculated which is 0.5 to 3 percent. Uh, the distribution of this uh, sewage could be done via this particular distribution uh, you know this arm which could rotate at a 2 rpm rate of 2 revolutions per minute and we have a under drainage system V shaped half round. So, the under drainage system below is V shaped and, uh, and this is covered by larger blocks. So, that uh, the uh, this uh, the smaller uh, filter media does not goes into that some amount of ventilation could be also put in that is 0.3 meter cube per meter square per second and the contact media is 30 mm to 80 mm in size uh, filter depth uh, gradually concentration decreases at lower levels and for high rate of filter uh, the depth is uh, 1 to 1.8 meter and for low rate of filter the depth is 2 to 3 meters. So, that means, we give lesser treatment in a high rate of filter. So, more water can pass, waste water could be treated whereas, in low rate of filter we have to we give a higher depth and the, treat, the movement of water is also slower in this particular case. Next, we will talk about the activated sludge process and in this particular process uh, as you know that we use activated sludge we that means, some amount of sludge is 
recirculated and that actually activates the uh, this uh, oxidation uh, this actually uh, this settling process or this decomposition process. So, aero, uh, um, uh, this is the aerobic process and so there is a aer aeration tank and we use a secondary settling tank after this particular process. Uh, so, and a sludge return line is also there from the secondary settling tank to the aeration tank and excess sludge waste, uh, sludge, uh, waste line is also there through which sludge is removed. So, that means, the uh, after aeration flock is, a biological flock is formed, uh, the effluent is uh, the organic material is also acted upon, the BOD is removed and, but uh, this flock that is there that or this sludge that is formed is uh, taken to a, uh, is separated via secondary settling tank and then this goes uh, either this could go to a sludge tank or sludge digestion tank and some part of the sludge is sent back to the initial aeration tank. Uh, so, that uh, it can um, mix with that and uh, provide that initial set of bacteria which would start the decomposition process. So, that is why this activated sludge is actually uh, no this this process is known as activated sludge process. So, blowing of air in the sewage or aeration uh, results in flock formation which contains bacteria, protozoa, fungi etcetera similar to the slime in sewage uh, filter. So, the principle is more or less same. And this flock settles when air is stopped and when added to fresh sewage causes its digestion. So, this flock uh, actually acts upon the uh, uh, back, uh, acts upon the organic matter, uh, breaks it down and at the same time uh, this flock when uh, you know when uh, this air is not aeration is not done then it automatically settles down it becomes the sludge and we can use this some part of this sludge back into the aeration process. So, that it starts that biological growth of that uh, you know in that particular uh, aeration tank and so on. So, uh, raw sewage uh, uh, after primary treatment is to get taken into this uh, uh, this uh, activated sludge process aeration tanks and activated sludge process is uh, uh, actually it is a detention period of around 1 to 1.5 hours. So, that means, in the aeration chambers uh, the uh, after a uh, after primary treatment where it is the sewage is detained for around 1 to 1.5 hours then it is taken to a aeration tank and raw sewage is mixed with activated sludge and sent to the aeration tank. So, that means, the uh, some amount of uh, raw sewage is mixed before uh, the aeration process starts and this pro this is known as mixed liquor uh, this particular mixed uh, sludge as well as the raw sewage and in the aeration tanks the sewage is aerated and agitated for almost 4 to 10 hours. So, it depends on the design of the tank, it depends on what shape of the tank, but roughly it takes around 4 to 10 hours for the sewage to get mixed uh, or with mixed with this uh, you know this organic matter. Uh, so, with this uh, microbial matter using oxygen. And uh, finally, after this uh, or we understand that uh, this actually results in the di digestion or, or, or decomposition of that particular organic matter and uh, removal of the stabilization of the organic matter and then finally, we take this to the final settling tank. And part of the effluent is sent back and mixed with raw sewage before primary sedimentation or you can say this part of the effluent or sludge actually is taken and mixed with the raw sewage before primary sedimentation and part of the sludge is returned for seeding to the sewage before aeration. So, that means, from the uh, uh, from after the treated effluent some part is even could be taken to the uh, sedimentation tank before even you know uh, before the primary sedimentation process that actually helps in starting the uh, this biological growth in that particular media. Uh, and even though the sedimentation process is not able to remove that biological uh, matter, but we start the biological growth process over there. So, that when it comes to the aeration tanks eventually automatically there is a certain amount of uh, bacterial growth in that particular uh, waste water, uh, but at the same time some part of the sludge is returned for seeding to the sewage uh, before aeration. So, that means, some sludge is also added before the aeration tank as well. So, both uh, could be done. So, two terms one is mixed liquor suspended solid. Uh, so, this uh, as we say that this uh, mixed liquor is uh, this uh, mixing of sludge with the uh, with this raw sewage is actually known as mixed liquor. And this suspended solid concentration in the aeration tank liquor, uh, this is what it refers to. And this index of mass of active microorganisms in the aeration tank 
that is given by this mixed liquor suspended solids. So, that gives us an idea about how much is the mass of active microorganisms in the aeration tank. And similarly, uh, mixed liquor volatile suspended solids, the amount of volatile suspended solids give us an idea about aerobic and facultative bacteria uh, uh, present uh, which are among the microorganisms. So, we get an idea about this kind of bacteria in the uh, this uh, aeration tank. So, these are the two terms which are important and sometimes used for uh, designing or sometimes used in uh, while in the process of designing this kind of systems. These are the two terms which are used to determine the quantity of bacteria that is required for this uh, stabilization of this organic matter. So, this image is uh, shows you certain uh, different forms of activated sludge process. Uh, for example, in the first process you can see it is a conventional activated process. So, we have influent coming in from the primary sedimentation tank, it comes into the aeration tank, then the sludge is formed which could be, this is a settling tank from where we can take out the effluent from the settling tank, the excess sludge comes to this part, uh, you know, then some part of it goes back and then is mixed with the effluent, some part of it is taken out. So, only a certain part is reused and this return sludge is mixed before the influent goes into the aeration tank and that actually leads to further uh, di, uh, you know removal of organic matter. Then is contact stabilization. In this particular process, there is no requirement for a primary sedimentation as well. So, we can do this particular process without primary sedimentation. Why? So, the influent wastewater is taken into the contact aeration tank, everything else remains same. Only thing is the return sludge is actually first re-aerated and that means further stabilization of the uh, organic matter happens over here and that actually reduces the quantity of sludge further and this is actually used uh, again mixed with the wastewater for further uh, aeration and this actually helps in you know the uh, process the uh, the di this uh, process of uh, removal of suspended matter as well as this biological matter is much much more effective which we can achieve over here. Because we are already used a secondary settling tank, so it takes care of both the suspended matter as well as suspend uh, organic matter which also gets you know uh, deposited in form of sludge. Next we have uh, oxidation ditch. So, in oxidation ditch you can see that uh, this is the oxidation tank. So, uh, oxidation tank uh, would be, uh, I will talk about that after this. So, in oxidation tanks, we allow the sewage to be, uh, uh, to be on a, uh, on a earthen basin and where uh, you can allow it to mix with the uh, air in the atmosphere and then aerobic bacteria can act upon on the upper surfaces, anaerobic bacteria can act upon at the lower surfaces, but more or less uh, this is where you know this uh, instead of you know aeration mechanical aeration we can say this is natural aeration is taking place everything else is same that means we from here the the uh, uh, this uh, excess sludge is taken to the this influent is taken to the settling tanks and where we can uh, uh, get the we from where the sludge that is generated some amount is excess sludge which could be taken to uh, landfill site whereas some amount could be return back and put it into before into the influent where before it goes into the oxidation tank and that that also increases the digestion or the or the amount of stabilization of the organic matter then we have got step aeration and in this case you are seeing the influent is coming down through multiple channels so basically there are multiple channels in the aeration tank and usually this return sludge is mixed with those uh, particular uh, uh, at at this uh, within the uh, this aeration tank and because we are taking the influent from multiple channels there is more thorough mixing and then not only that uh, 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 the influent wherever it is coming in here the mixing volume is more uh, then the then in the next layer the mixing volume is less so usually that's why if we divide the entire flow into multiple channels then mixing could be more effective so this is the same system as we have learned but only thing the influent is being mixed uh, you know in a much better way. So, a complete mix plant is where both the influent as well as the return sludge is first mixed and then taken via multiple channels and then 
each channel is separate and then from there we can the everything else then we go to the settling tank where excess sludge is uh, taken out and some amount of sludge is returned. So, this is a complete mixed plant and as you can understand here mixing is even more than a step aeration plant. So, these are some of the variation of the activated sludge process. Finally, we have got stabilization or oxidation ponds and as we were discussing earlier that these are artificial open flow uh, through earthen basins and they are designed to treat sewage and uh, usually the detention period is larger and organic matters get stabilized by natural forces, not by mechanical aeration, but by natural you know aeration you can say. So, this ponds could be both aerobic, anaerobic or facultative depending on the mechanism of water purification. So, aerobic we understand that oxygen is uh, require is actually used uh, it is used to for algal photosynthesis that means photosynthesis of the algae and usually this kind of ponds are shallow that is only 0.5 meter deep uh, deep and usually start to prevent anaerobic conditions in settled sludge so we don't allow the sludge to settle down uh, and bod loadings are around 40 to 120 kg per hectare per day so, this kind of uh, BOD loading could be taken care of in this kind of aerobic ponds. In anaerobic pond, uh, purification is due to methane formation that means anaerobic bacteria acts upon uh, the sewage and then that is why we form methane and, uh, and also CO2 of course. So, the depth is larger in this pond 2.5 to 4 meters and usually they could be used for treating industrial sewage and uh, and uh, you know in sometimes used for digestion of STP uh, sludge as well and depending on the temperature and waste characteristics BOD load could be 400 to 3000 kg per hectare per day which is much higher than the BOD loading of aerobic ponds and 5 to 50 day detention period results in 50 to 85 percent BOD reduction. So, the detention period is even you know in months in not in instead of days. So, the problem with anaerobic pond is uh, there is a bad order the methane formation takes place in the lower levels and so this sometimes it is uh, whereas aerobic ponds does not uh, have any kind of bad order and all these other issues. So, it is better to have a system where we can use both these processes so that we can achieve the 85 percent BOD removal of anaerobic systems that means it is uh, if we combine both the systems the effectiveness of BOD removal will probably increase. So, that is where a facultative pond comes in and it acts aerobically at the surface while anaerobic conditions prevails at the bottom and aerobic layers actually prevent the orders because you know the upper layers are aerobic and this uh, CH4 CO2 is H2S and CO2 is formed these are taken uh, by the you know the plants or the uh, in algae they take the CO2 and then release oxygen which further helps in photosynthesis which further helps in this uh, you know this aerobic uh, uh, stabilization. So, facultative ponds are the most uh, the best system that is possible and here the sewage enters the pond uh, suspended organic matter in the influent and biofloculated colloidal organic matter settles to the bottom. So, that means uh, in any kind of you know uh, stabilization ponds there is sedimentation and there is both chemical sedimentation naturally occurring chemical sedimentation that is biofloculated uh, colloidal organic matter actually the, those also settles and in absence of dissolved oxygen at the bottom uh, that is why we see that anaerobic reactions takes place and CH4 is released which actually also indicates that that BOT is also removed. So, in the upper layers algae grows which utilize the CO2 as we were talking about that and uh, for photosynthesis and that releases O2 which results in aerobic conditions and in the upper layers this oxidation uh, is happens due to aerobic bacteria and this entered interrelationship is known as algae bacteria symbiosis. So, that is what is illustrated in this particular image. So, the other thing that is important is that means as we have learnt earlier that even when we are talking about this um, uh, cell purification process that temperature sunlight this plays a big role in this kind of uh, treatment processes. So, in India because we are at a la higher latitude uh, that we are at latitude from 8.4 degree uh, north to 37.6 degree north uh, the permissible organic loadings are much higher than colder countries 
or well, or at other latitudes which are at much higher latitude. So, in this you can see that uh, the more low this latitude degree is less that means, more we are towards the equator the organic loading is high because the sunlight availability is also high. So, here the organic loading is 325 uh, kg of BOD per hectare per day whereas, for 30 at the 36 degree uh, uh, north latitude the BOD loading is around 150 maximum BOD loading that we can give is 150 kg per BOD uh, of per hectare per day. So, that is the uh, that means, the amount of sunlight or the temperature also plays a big role in determining what kind of BOD loading we can give for this particular stabilization ponds. So, oxygen produced by photosynthesis also depend on sunlight that is why sunlight is important and temperature is important as I was discussing that in India BOD removal is almost 4 times compared to colder countries and the depth of this facultative ponds are adopted around 1 to 1.5 meters which is in between aerobic and anaerobic ponds and detention period is about 6 days and around 80 to 90 percent of BOD is removed by treatment via this kind of ponds. So, uh, as you understand that the detention period of 6 days means we have to design this pond so that they are able to take the incoming sewage for 6 days and not only that this pond needs to be dislodged at intervals of 6 to 8, 12 years that means there is lot of sludge that gradually uh, settle and this uh, that and accumulate and the rate of accumulation is around 0.07 uh, meter cube per capita per day. So, you also need to multiply the number of people for uh, whom this wastewater is generated into the number of years uh, or like if the discharging frequency is 6 to 12 years that means, you have to multiply by 6 or 12 and with 0 0.07 meter cube which is the amount of sludge that is formed and you will get the volume that is required to retain the sludge. So, if I have a, a tank some the lower part is for sludge storing this excess sludge which is 0 0.07 into population into number of years of cleaning. So, that will actually give you the sludge volume and the upper volume is for detention period of 6 days that is total waste water incoming waste water uh, that is Q multiplied by 6 days. Okay. So, this is uh, so that is how we can determine the volume that is required for this kind of uh, stabilization ponds. So, some protection measures has to be taken it has to be around 200 meters from residential areas because wind will carry the smell from this pond and also better to have uh, drinking water wells at least 15 meters away from the pond. Uh, so, that you know there is no contamination and all and uh, usually these ponds are rectangular uh, with uh, length not exceeding 3 times the width and maximum basin length is sometimes uh, kept at around 750 meters. So, you can see in the images the designs uh, there could be several arrangements over here these are arranged in sort of series one after another here it is also uh, we are divided one, one large pond and then there are two small ponds sometimes it is applied all parallelly to all these ponds together. So, there could be different arrangements of this particular uh, units. So, ponds are designed in multiple units in either series with the pond, first pond having 65 to 75 70 percent of the total area to avoid anaerobic conditions. So, the first pond is actually bigger as you can see in this particular image it holds 70 percent of the entire volume and that is done. So, that we can have a larger pond and if it is a smaller pond there is more chance of this uh, you know uh, this anaerobic conditions developing. So, it is better to have the first pond larger because most of the uh, uh, sewage load comes into that and then from there we can have subsequent ponds which are smaller in size. So, uh, it we can have multiple cells in this uh, system as you can see 1, 2, 3 cells here also 1, 2, 3 cells and this could be uh, in parallel and if it is parallel then it facilitates maintenance uh, like dislodging or repairs without upsetting the entire process. So, that means, we can keep two operating while one is being repaired and uh, parallel systems also provide better distribution of settled solids and multiples, but also we have got we can have multiple cells in series 
uh, which decreases dispersion number and enables better BOD and coliform removal and reduce algal concentration in the effluent. So, series are more effective in BOD removal and uh, reduced algal concentration in the final effluent. So, in some ways series are better whereas, for uh, you know if we do a parallel uh, treatment then uh, in terms of maintenance and all these things it becomes much easier. So, individual cells also should not exceed around 20 hectares in area for this kind of stabilization ponds. So, uh, these are the different methods of biological treatment and uh, now overall if I look into the entire sewage treatment process there could be several ways we can arrange the different treatment units to, uh, to uh, effectively treat the sewage for a particular area. So, we have primary treatment, we have secondary or biological treatment, then we have got final treatment. So, in this particular image you can see different two options. One is uh, the first one is uh, you can see this part is the primary treatment and this part is the secondary treatment and uh, aerobic this is where we are using aerobic mechanized biochemical sewage treatment process and secondary treatment can also be extended aeration and without digester. So, we can do more aeration that will reduce the need for a uh, digestion uh, further digestion tank at the end for sludge of course. So, that means, uh, uh, we can use variations of the same system uh, in uh, and we can uh, and that actually has to be determined based on a uh, uh, lot of factors based on the, uh, the type of sewage and based on the overall arrangement of the treatment unit and so on. So, let us see this first one. So, we have raw sewage then they, we have a sorry raw sewage then we have a screen and then the grid chamber where grid removal takes place and then we have our the primary settling tank the first one then we have our biological reactor which is the biological oxidation and synthesis happens in this particular reactor so this could be aerobic mechanical uh, system and then we have our secondary settling tank and then we get our treat treated sewage which can be taken out and disposed of or reused even. And we have a secondary set, uh, set, uh, sludge uh, tank which is brought to a thickener where the sludge is thickened that means, the water is taken out of the sludge and uh, then the some amount of sludge uh, the could be taken to the uh, uh, to the primary settling tank uh, the super anion that means, the water could be taken to the primary settling tank whereas, uh, some sludge comes from the primary tank to this particular thickener and this thickened sludge actually is taken to the aerobic anaerobic digester and where the sludge is being digested and again super anant which is the basically the clear liquid that can be taken and put into this particular uh, before the primary settling tank whereas, the digested sludge could be uh, taken out for, fi for final disposal and this anaerobic digester we have CH2 and CO2 gas coming out of that. So, here we are not having a activated sludge process. So, this is just a biological reactor Maybe it is a not a aerobic mechanized uh, system uh, this could be a, uh, a particular you know this uh, uh, intermittent sand system or a contact bed or any other kind of media could have been used. So, this is a uh, attached growth system and this is the entire process but we could instead of this we could also have a aerobic mechanical biochemical sewage treatment process as well and then actually we can have to have a rich sludge return line which will probably go into that particular aeration tank so this is another system where uh, 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 this is a conventional aerobic sewage treatment for uh, including uh, sludge digestion is uh, uh, not there which I mean it has to be added so we have this screen grid chamber and then without any primary treatment we can directly have this kind of treatment where anaerobic reduction and synthesis can take place where we can have a anaerobic filter or we can have a anaerobic RBC this is um, uh, then we have a UASBR and so, uh, uh, so that means this is upflow then sequential batch reactor and so on. So, there are several processes that could be involved where we can get rid of the settling tank and depending on uh, how much amount of this digestion takes place and then we have this final settling tank where thus uh, you know both the suspended solids as well as, well as that excess uh, deposited sludge from the organic matter as well uh, all could be uh, uh, separated. So, depends on how we actually organize this particular system depends on what kind of treatment we actually devise. 
So, this is where we can say that only biological treatment is also adequate. So, as to uh, we can just uh, do a primary treatment and let the sewage out. Similarly, we can only do biological treatment and let the sewage out as well. So, these are uh, two more systems, uh, two more arrangements of sewage treatment plants, where you can see that uh, this uh, we are using uh, the uh, we are using the water for some amount of irrigation or food crop irrigation. So, we have untreated wastewater, we have screens, then we have uh, grid removal, some amount of aeration is also done over here and then we have the primary sedimentation tanks, solids goes to the digester, this is the sl uh, sludge digestion tank, then we have a trickling filter, then we have again having a aeration and a uh, uh, flocculation basin we have then a clarification secondary clarifier is there and then finally, uh, we can get rid of some of the uh, this effluent over here and then we can also this after clarification we can have uh, this uh, flocculation filtration then we can have chlorine as well. So, that means, we can have some amount of uh, you know once the clarification is there then we can use chemicals for flocculation to some extent then filtration is there, we can add chlorine, then we can have uh, you know, uh, then we can use this for storage and we can store it and use it and use pumps to do for uh, food, uh, this food crop irrigation. So, this is again you can see that we are using chemical coagulation after even a biological process. So, these are you know, these are specific case specific arrangements that are done in particular cases, because we require maybe some amount of chemicals are still there, which has to be removed only via this particular process. So, in the next one, you can see that untreated wastewater uh, screens, primary sedimentation, uh, oxidation ditch is used instead of you know trickling filter or a biological treatment. Instead of a artificial biological treatment, we use a natural biological treatment. Then again, clarification, secondary clarifiers. Then uh, some amount of water is discharged, but the water that is reused that is again uh, taken through a ozonation tank. We put in ozone over there, so that is sort of disinfection happens over here. So we have again clarification over here. Some chemicals are mixed over here. Then sand filtration, then activated carbon absorption, UV disinfection, and finally again agricultural irrigation. So this, you know, there could be more complicated ways of treating wastewater depends on how you are going to finally use it based on that we would do that treatment. So, to conclude sewage can be treated uh, via various combination of processes and uh, this is decided based on quality of discharge intended, space availability and cost and secondary treatment can be directly applied after removal of grit as well and oxidation ponds are easy to implement provided adequate space is available. So, these are the references that you can use. Thank you.